This video looks at dismantling the starter motor itself. But before I start, I'd just like to mention the two previous videos in this series that I put up, videos one and two. Um, I'd like to mention that if you're going to view them, you cannot view them as I intended them to be viewed using the YouTube app. None of the labels that I put on the video can be seen. Um, so there's essential information that you will miss out on. Uh, it's, uh, you can either view the video using an iPhone or an iPad or whatever um, by not using the YouTube app or view the video on something like a PC. It only affects the two videos on the starter mode systems, um, videos one and two. Uh, none of my other videos are affected by this uh, and that includes the one we're about to see. So what you can see here is a cross-sectional view through the main part of the motor. These motors are used on uh, virtually all BMWs and you'll also find them used on motocruises, Harley Davidsons and also they're used on most cars throughout the world. A solenoid or magnetic switch plunger shown in blue is connected to a drive lever which is pivoted at its centre to the casing. The lower end of the lever is forked to engage with a guide ring. The ring acts against a unidirectional roller clutch and pinion gear. Helical splines formed on the armature shaft engage with the driving part of the unidirectional clutch. These splines cause the pinion to rotate slightly when the clutch and pinion are moved axially. A strong return spring in the solenoid retains the lever and the pinion assembly in the disengaged position. Right, so now what we're going to do is have a go at taking the start motor apart. We've got the uh, marks the end plate uh, so that we know what way it goes back on in relation to the motor. And uh, we'll just take those two little nuts off. So we're just going to take the end cover off now. These are two long bolts that go all the way through the length of the of the motor. Is it? Yeah. Okay, so we've just marked the front of the, the motor in relation to the uh, body of the motor so as we get it back on the right way around and now I'm going to take this um, selector fork, fork pivot out
Okay, so now we can pull the front of this off. There's the cover. And you can see there's the um, levers that throw that forward. Let's pull that fork out. There's the armature assembly. And this is a one way clutch. After the engine is fired, the pinion speed will exceed the armature speed. If the motor is still in use, the inner race of the unidirectional clutch will exceed the armature speed and the rollers in the unidirectional clutch will then be unlocked and the clutch will slip to protect the motor from being driven and the consequent risk of over revving the armature. Right, so we're just getting this So there's the starter gear arrangement. Right, so now. Right. So we can see here the um, armature brushes. and uh, they've still got some life left in them so they're spring loaded against um, this commutator here and uh, the commutator is showing some signs of being dirty um, but uh, the only way, proper way to true that up would be on a lathe uh, just to undercut it a bit just lift the brushes out it's just done by lifting up these springs and pulling the brushes up on there and so we can now push that brush holder off so if we want to um, replace the brushes two of them are fixed onto the brush plate trouble is getting hold of brushes but you might be able to get you might be able to cut down some uh, car starter motor ones to fit so they're fixed on there and then the other two brushes are attached to the field windings here and here and they would need to be uh, unsoldered or cut off um, to fit there's the armature. And just clean the slots here on the commutator. Clean up the surface of the armature again. Actually, that's didn't need undercutting by the looks of it with the lathe. That looks quite quite good.
blow off. Right, finally, I'm just going to wipe the armature over with a piece of uh, paper soaked in alcohol. Give it a blow off. 